We want to pivot just a bit to crime at the University of New Mexico. After leading the country in auto thefts, that crime was down 40% last year. There were more reports, unfortunately, though, of serious crimes like rape on campus. I sat down with a UNM police lieutenant last week to talk about all these issues. I'm here with Lieutenant Trace Peck from the UNM PD. We're here to talk about crime on campus and safety issues, how we can keep ourselves more safe on campus is our main goal here. Lieutenant, thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Now, there's a new report out talking about things that happened, happened on campus during the last calendar year. Why don't we start there, kind of pull back a little bit, talk about some of those numbers, and I want to take a little bit of a deeper dive about the initiatives you folks have put in place on campus and what we can expect from those down the road. So what's your overall take on the, on the latest report? Well, we're happy to see uh, auto theft numbers down. Yes. You know, we're, uh, you know, we kind of go hand in hand with APD's number, and I, you know, I hear their numbers are down also. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, the collaboration with the New Mexico Auto Theft Task Force was huge for us to get involved in. Right. Um, the use of bait cars here on campus that you know, may, may or may not be known. Um, we've seen a number of arrests um, on campus just with those bait cars. So right. that's, uh, that word gets out. Um, sure. You know, especially for maybe some of the large operations, chop shops or something like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe we were not the big feeding ground we used to be. Had you and him been, been targeted by large operations for these things? I'd not heard that before. Well, we, we think so. Okay. You know, it's probably, you know, we, you, you take down. I mean, it makes down, sense. Don't yes, get me wrong. Yes, you take down guys. one of these uh, operations like that and you see numbers decrease, then you gotcha. know that it was, you know, a serial things. Or when you start seeing specific types of cars, you know. Right. Um, the older Hondas were taken um, and stuff like that. So once you start seeing those numbers uh, consistent, if you've just seen somebody taking a car for, you know, to do, go do a crime, they don't care what kind of car it is. Mm -hmm. But when you start seeing some statistics about which types of cars, then you know it's maybe a trend. And, gotcha. But uh, the, the collaboration with the New Mexico uh, Auto Theft Task Force, I think it was huge with us, and along with the, you know, the, uh, the money that's been um, put towards cameras and video surveillance. And so that, that happened, the cameras and the video stuff, because that was talked about in the press when that first awful report about the amount of yes. auto thefts came up. Yes. And, and that, how, how impactful was that? In your it was view? huge. You know, it was huge for us to be able to go to the legislation and get uh, the three million dollars that was budgeted to increase our video surveillance. Right. You know, our goal is to have a, a a, a working camera and under you know surveillance in every single parking lot and every you know condensed area that students may go to. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know I think we're moving towards that. We're not where we need to be yet, but it, it takes time and um, you know and how these cameras are going to be integrated into our system into our dispatch center so we actually can view the, you know uh, real time crime. Oh, interesting. That's very interesting. Yes. Let's talk about some of the other things. It's been good news there on auto theft, uh, obviously assaults and things of bodily harm are a big problem. Yes. When folks think about this psychologically, where do, where do we stand there in the latest statistics? You know, um, we're, we're holding even. Okay. Um, you know, uh, you know, a couple, one or two more, one or two less, you know, in most of the assaults and batteries. Um, mm -hmm. You know, luckily we've kind of distanced ourselves to some of the crimes that are happening on our adjacent sidewalks, you know, on Central. Um, you know, of course, recently with the UNM student, um, and being murdered up, you know, not, you know, a couple of miles away, that's, you know, it's too close to home for us, sure. you know, so um, bringing the state police in had an impact for us also, you know, patrolling our perimeter of the campus and, you know, and actually driving through campus at times. What so, didn't realize that. That's yes, interesting. Yes. So Let, I'll, I'll stop there for a quick sec. Did you find that helpful? That, oh, most that folks definitely. Under, see the presence of the state police? Most, most definitely. You know, we, we are state property. So, okay. um, you know, if a critical event was to happen here on campus, you know, state police um, would have jurisdiction, mm -hmm. you know, over our campus. Okay. Um, so, the, you know, they were quite helpful, you know, driving around our perimeters and you know, right. assisting us. In Has there been a could. reach out to continue the presence possibly on campus, even if it might not be happening in other places? Because, again, you're state-owned property. Right. Not so much. Okay. Um, you know, the, the trend in uh, President Stokes being so safety-oriented mm -hmm. is really uh, um, helped us with our assets and you know we just recently got six more officers so um, you know we're just under 50 officers now so okay. that's huge interesting and we you know we run three shifts 24 7 um, operation um, same amount of officers on graveyards a day shift so okay. um, you know we're very you know i think the administration has really safety oriented compared to years past. Are there hot spots around campus we should be aware of? Are there, are, are there trends showing where things tend to happen? Is it within a certain amount of the perimeter? Is it deep in campus? What there, there isn't there? much. You know, we have such a geographical footprint that um, there's not one 
area that's okay. hotter than the other. I wish there was, because yeah, yeah. then we could just focus all of our attention in sure. one spot. Um, we did recently put together a mobile camera system, mm -hmm. so we can put that in any location that we want, um, solar powered. Um, so during athletic events, during those, uh, when they're away games, we can watch those vehicles, sure. you know. Um, or any specific event, we can take that mobile camera and put it anywhere we see fit. Right. Um, you know, if we have an uptick in the hospital side of things and their parking lots, because you know most people think it's just UNM, but we also UNMPD covers the large geographical area of the hospital also. Wow. So there's a number of parking lots there also on North Campus. Also up by the law school, do you, do you exactly. patrol up there as well? Most certainly, and and, okay. and the golf course. Oh, okay, uh, the golf course as well. No so kidding. So we uh, we're going all the way over to Indian School. Interesting. We have such a large student body here, like the, the you know the third largest city in the state. When you know students in section, that's right. you know that's a lot of eyes and ears. Yep. A lot of eyes and ears. Mm -hmm. and if we can get some people, I know it's hard between classes not to be on your cell phone and getting caught up on those texts. But right. you know, if we would just a little more awareness on your surroundings, mm -hmm. that makes sense. We get a lot of feedback here at New Mexico PBS, as you might imagine, about rape. Yes. Uh, very much concerns yes. about that for women across campus. What's what's the deal there? What's been put in place, and what's the, what do the numbers show? You know, um, I think they're making it so much easier to report than when I initially started here. You know, 11 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, you know, reaching out and the resources and the victim services that we're providing some of these victims, even if they don't want to report it to the police department, even if they don't want to go through that process. You know, and being you know, um, that, that's a stressful sure. in itself. Yep. Um, but I think some of the victim services that we can offer, I think it's making it a lot more easier, a lot more comfortable for some of these victims to report. Okay. And, and that's why we say, I think we see our numbers going up quite a bit mm -hmm. um, because of the ones I actually investigate or my team investigate on the sexual abuse response team that we have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not seeing those numbers, but when those numbers come in that, that we report in our annual crime report, right. we get those from, you know, confidential sources. I see. Um, so, and we see those numbers are higher than what we're actually seeing. So we know and a lot of people are reporting not only to us. Right. Now, do you, I'm going to imagine, I think I know what the answer is here, but it would be pretty clear you would work with APD because if rape happens over here, that rapist is probably going to do something over here as well. Maybe campus over here and city over here and try to st stitch that information together. Are you working with APD on those kind of things? Yeah, um, we do. You know, yeah. if they, then they reach out to us if they're looking for somebody or if they're, you know, if, of course, if there was ever a serial rapist right. or something like that. Right. You know, um, the ones we're concerned with is, you know, maybe the, um, binge drinking and stuff like that at parties yep. and the awareness and uh, bystander intervention and you know just that alone has helped so you know we have a lot of things going um, UNM received a large grant on sexual abuse um, and how we respond to that and the resources that we have to put in place to qualify for that grant so that is definitely a work in progress interesting the idea that came up a little bit ago about the wall or a fence around campus right. It got a little twisted, my sense, in how it got sort of put out there to the public. So let's back up here just a little bit. Was there a thought there from UNM police about this originally, or was this something just sort of popped up in front of you guys and you had to deal with? Or, and your sense of how well that would either work or not work in this environment? You know, it, it's a work in progress. Okay. You know, um, you know, we have corridors here on campus where we have easy access to um, mm -hmm. Girard and Central. That's been a work in progress. That's always been a hot spot for um, the traffic coming through the area. You know, if we could start um, maybe in that corridor and see how it goes. Um, you know, we have an open campus, and right. you know, we we like that atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, but the uh, homeless population you know throughout Albuquerque is not getting any better and you know we have to find ways not only to make our students safe but to feel safe okay you know would a fence make them feel safer I don't know you know that's mm -hmm. that's something that's something we're looking into mm -hmm. you know or would just closing the campus from 10 o'clock at night till 6 in the morning would that be realistic mm -hmm. to, to start with mm -hmm. um, you know, when you ever look at a project like this, you have to weigh the ups and downs, and you know, it would be quite expensive to build a fence across campus, you sure. know. It's not as if other campuses haven't done this. It's happened in other mm -hmm. places around the country, some, you know, very urban campuses on the back east and certainly on the west coast. We're in urban campuses as right. well, where you, right. you guys are surrounded by a city, basically. Right. Um,
can you really do one and not do them all? I could imagine chase, it's almost like squeezing a balloon. You know what I mean? If someone has yeah. intent, they know the gate's over here, but they'll just kind of walk. I know you guys talk yeah. about this. So. Which, which is good yeah. because we can put a camera there. Ah. So if we can funnel them through, um, the way, you know, uh, technology is now, I mean, license plate readers and, um, you know, we can say we're looking for a red car with a black top and the computer system will spit out every time a red car with a black top went through. Wow. I mean, so technology is there. So, you know, if we're funneling people through a, a gate, maybe that um, might work better with video systems because sure. we know where to look. Sure. Thank you for coming in. Uh, maybe we can do this when these, these reports come out. We find this is a, a, a topic of hot topic, as you could imagine, yes. uh, for us here and for you as well, of course. Yes, definitely. Please come back and, and, and share with us all your initiatives. We right. appreciate this. Thank you.